This is KGW News at Sunrise. I was trying to get out. I got out and I was trying to climb. And it was obviously too deep. And uh, from there, that's when I started screaming help. That woman is talking about her rescue from a ravine in Vernonia. And she's thanking her iPhone for tipping off first responders. And if you've been on Twitter lately, you've probably seen all the buzz about the app's new flashing X sign. That is at its San Francisco office, hmm. why the company was forced to remove it days after it was installed. And we are also live this morning in Baker City. That is a look at the Geyser Grand Hotel in Baker City. And I know of two people who are staying there right now. One is Sunrise photographer Eric Patterson giving us this shot of the library and he'll pan over to show the other guests that we know of this morning at the hotel. One Rodney Hill. <laughs> uh, we're gonna check in with Rod here in just a second. First, we say good morning. It is a Tuesday edition of Sunrise. What's up, Rod? Uh, Chris McGinnis is handling double duty. He's got your traffic reports, of course, and he's also doing some weather for Rod because Rod, I mean, Rod is really busy talking about Baker City this morning. So Rod, we're going back to you right now, my friend. Uh, you mentioned last half hour. This is a live report that you have wanted to do for years. Yeah, absolutely. So we're spending this hour, this is our final half hour at five, of course, being here at the uh, Geyser Grand Hotel, which of course has so much history. Um, and the next hour, we're going to go just down the street to a local business called Sweet Wife Bakery or Sweet Wife uh, Baking, pardon me. And we've got a whole bunch of locals in there just dying to say hi and talk about their town. So we're excited to tell you about that. Think about it. In the late 1800s, what you're looking at right now must have been just a huge room, so much grandeur. Today, it's almost intimate, right? Because our scales have become so much larger. But the woodwork Eric is showing you, absolutely gorgeous and mostly entirely original to the 1800 build. How about that? All right, let's take a look at your day plan and get you out the door with the weather forecast. We have 50s and 60s with clear skies over the valley. Much of what we've had for the last week or so. You can see PDX right now reporting 61 degrees. At noon will be 76, so another pretty comfortable morning. And then later today, like yesterday, getting a little toasty. It was 85 yesterday. We have us topping out this afternoon at 87 degrees. Now, Chris McGuess is coming up. Chris, one, two, Two, I'm counting cars on Main Street in Baker City. Two of them, sir. Back to you. I absolutely had to get the traffic report for Baker City in. All right, let's bring you back to Vancouver. And, uh, oh, we're sputtered along here. Our watchdog camera's stuck, but I-5 at uh, SR14 in pretty good shape. The I-5 drive out of Wilsonville. Also getting busier, but so far, guys, no crashes, no unexpected delays on the roads just yet. All right, more from Chris and Rod coming up here in a few minutes. But right now, our first news headline this half hour. It's an update on a brush fire near Multnomah Falls. Crews are mopping up this morning after getting control of this fire, which started around 9 o'clock last night. Cascade Locks Fire and EMS shared these photos with us last night, and they show the flames right there along the hillside above the eastbound lanes of I-84. Officials say the fire grew to about a half acre in size at milepost 33, there's still no word this morning on a cause. A woman's car is still stuck this morning after she crashed into an embankment in rural Columbia County. The craziest part of all of this, it was a feature on her phone that actually helped save her life. Yeah, you wouldn't think that a cell phone could save your life, but she says it's absolutely the case here. Ashley says she was heading home Friday night when her truck slid off the road. So she says she tried to climb out of the embankment, but it was just too steep for her. So that's when she started yelling for help. And that yelling, combined with the SOS feature on her cell phone, is what helped dispatch and a neighbor find her. When I first got on scene, I couldn't even see it. I was like, it was amazing that they found it. I was so happy that they actually had people come and help me. Fire crews recommend knowing how that SOS feature on your phone works because obviously from this story, we now know it can definitely help you in an emergency. Back to a story that we've been covering nationally. The Idaho mother convicted of murdering her two children has been sentenced to life in prison. Lori Vallow Daybell received five consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole yesterday. Back in May, you may remember, a jury found Vallow guilty of murder and conspiracy to commit murder in the deaths of her two kids, JJ and Tylee, as well as her husband's late wife, Tammy. Multiple family members also spoke in court yesterday. Most called Vallow a murderer, a liar, cruel and heartless. 
The judge said the photos shown in court were traumatizing. I don't think to this day you have any remorse for the effort and heartache you caused for others who looked for your children when you knew where they were and knew they were dead. Valo De Bell addressed the court for the first time too, claiming her children's spirits have visited her and told her she didn't do anything wrong and to stop worrying. Her husband, Chad Daybell, is facing similar charges as well as insurance fraud and grand theft charges. His trial is set to begin April 1st of 2024. Other headlines we're tracking this morning. Today, the new hit and run alert system begins in Washington. The system can help identify a vehicle driving away from the scene of a crash involving serious injury or death. The public can sign up for alerts. Law enforcement will also post those on social media. Washington lawmakers okayed this program. It's now in a two year trial period. A man authorities call a prolific car thief will be back in court next week. Jesse Dane Brower pleaded not guilty yesterday to charges including possession of a stolen vehicle and eluding police. Authorities say they were executing a search warrant at Brower's home over the weekend and found evidence related to dozens of stolen vehicles and stolen car parts. His bail was set at $30,000. And the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office says so far this year it's taken in 122 guns for safekeeping. This special unit works to reduce gun violence by taking guns from people who legally can't have them or people who give them up voluntarily. And those are some of your Tuesday morning headlines. All right, if you've been watching this morning, you know that Rod Hill is live in Baker City. But before we check back in with Rod, we want to share some of the places that our viewers said Rod should check out during his visit. So Kathy leads us off here. She says the bakery. <laughs> she told us, I believe it's called Sweet Wives. Mm. All right, Sweet Wives. And then we hear from Patty who said Sweet Wife Bakery. Oh, <laughs> Sweet okay. Wife. And then we heard from Bryn who said Sweet wives. So I believe those are the same <laughs> suggestions <laughs> said three different ways. That's popular. <laughs> the correct name of that bakery, by the way, we now know is Sweet Wife Baking. And the truth is, Rod will be there live this morning, <laughs> coming up in the six o'clock hour. But right now, gang, I know he's still live at the Grand Geyser Hotel. Should we check back in with our Let's favorite weatherman? Rodney, live at the hotel this morning. What do you have for us right now? You know, it's funny because we had the same discussion. Is it plural? No, it's singular. Sweet wife baking. Yes, we're going to be there. One more shot of the beautiful uh, entranceway as you, as you walk in and the grand dining room and there are guest rooms uh, around uh, on the second floor. up There's three rooms of, of guest rooms. Uh, I think 30 guest rooms right now, Barbara. Is that right? You were telling me the original plan had like 70 rooms, but you they were really tiny by today's standards. Right. Yeah. So we created 30. Uh -huh. Barbara Sidway, by the way, uh, her and her husband responsible for restoring this gym that at one point was going to be just torn down. Yes. The demolition order had been issued by the city and the downtown community said, no, we need to save this. And they talked us into coming here and doing it. We're so it glad was, we did. It was shut down for what, the uh, latter 60s into the 90s, and then you did the work and it reopened. Correct. Yeah. So um, you were telling me earlier, I said, Barbara, you got a minute. What do you want to talk about? And, and you gave me a topic that I wasn't expecting, but go ahead and share with me. We're really proud that we can welcome the public in many ways into this special place. We have tours every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday by our hotel historian. And we have dinner every night, seven nights a week, and overnight rooms. The, uh, and when you walk in, it's gorgeous. And the, the restaurant open seven days a week. I mean, yes. everything's functioning. Mm -hmm. And I yes. love, you were telling me, I asked, and you were proud to tell me this has been a business success story. I mean, people are using the hotel. I can see it's great and the history is bright. Yes, <clears throat> we're very happy that we did this and we're actually expanding with another uh, dozen and a half uh, jacuzzi suites next door in a, in a historic oh my goodness. building. Mm -hmm. Eric has zoomed in on this goofy photo. It's a goofy story, ladies and gentlemen, but it's interesting. It's history. So, Barbara, give us like the 15, 20 seconds uh, rundown of what we're looking at in this photo. This gentleman is deceased in the photo. Those are his funeral flowers. In the very early first decade of the 20th century, this was a thing, kind of like Weekend at Bernie's. The movie, yes. Yes, and so <laughs> you had your deceased friend and you had a party with him present. It's crazy, that's obviously, you can recognize the woodwork, that's here in the hotel. They have, you and mentioned tours, and they have these historic photos, which I love this sort of thing, sprinkled th throughout the hotel. Again, so much 
history here. There was that room that Eric showed you earlier in the show that we called the, the library. Um, there was a point where salesmen could rent that room for $1, $1, and they would set up their trunks, and then they would spend the night sleeping with their belongings that they were selling to people. Uh, of course, uh, rooms today, not crazy expensive, but they are more than a dollar. Okay, <laughs> Barbara, thank you so much. Thank you, Rod. Let's get you to the weather forecast. I'm going to run back to the iPad while we take the weather graphics. We have a beautiful clear sky morning uh, outside. Really clear most areas of our state this morning. We've got temperatures starting off where they have been here in Portland. That's in the 50s and the 60s. You're looking at the Wells Fargo view. We're at 61 degrees outside right now. Uh, 52 over in Hillsboro, 57 down in Aurora. Again, plenty of comfortable sleeping spots. Spots. Hello, Baker City. 48 is your number. Uh, down in John Day, it's 56. Down in Burns, temperatures holding on about 50 degrees. See the gray area? Boy, we've been covering this for what? Going on a couple weeks now. That's Lane and Deschutes County. Still under an air quality alert for wildfire smoke. Weather computer says these will be your temperatures. Uh, throughout the day, and we're going to stop the clock this afternoon at 530. It shows 88 in Salem, 87 in Portland, 73 over in Tillamook, some 90s out toward the Dalles and Pendleton, 92 in the Grand, 92 this afternoon in Baker City as well. And let's see what's coming up. Look at that. Okay, well, I don't want to do that. Hold on. Let me back up. I'm running the remote iPad. This is what I want to show you. Baker City, 95 for the actual high today. The Grand, 94. Sunny and hot. Areas of wildfire smoke. Winds are going to be on the light side for the most part. And then here's your seven-day forecast for the Rose City. Uh, 87, 88 today. Tomorrow, Thursday, maybe a degree cooler. But then we go into the 90s this weekend, 90 Saturday and 94 Sunday. Hey, when we come back, Brenda Braxton, we're going to be out live on Main Street. And then we're going to get to, let me say it correctly, sweet wife baking with all kinds of folks ready to say hi from Baker City. Back to you. Yeah, those treats are your happy place. I can't wait to check back with you. Thank you, Rod.